Hi Gophers, my name is Alex Pluto and today me and my buddy are going to make the second part of Microservices with GoKit series. In the previous video we prepared the local environment for our three services and today we will continue to work with the code from the previous video. I will copy all the code we wrote in the previous video. So we have this folder 12 GoKit copy everything here. Alright, now we have, we don't need this readme file, docker compose and tree services. Now just to make it work, as we have a different uh, folder name, we just need to replace the go import. So let's search for 12 go kit 1, right, and replace it with 13 go kit 2, replace. Let's implement our notificator service first by writing the prot definition as it's supposed to be a Jira PC service. We already have a pre-generated file. If we go to notificator package, Jira PC, prot above, notificator.proto, as you can see now it's quite empty. Let's implement it. And let's make it very simple. The request will be so it's string email and also let's send the content of the message. And in reply, we will return the ID generated by the service, kind of reference ID of our email. Great, just replace here with tab and save. Now we need to generate the client and server stops. We can use the compile.sh file, which is already given us by kit command line tool. If you open it, it's just a proto-c command. So we go to notificator, package, rpc, eb, and run this, compile.sh. So what it will do, it will update the pb.go file. So let's have a look, right, we have send email request with email and content. And we have a client and server and reply. Everything is here. Now we need to implement the service itself. Instead of sending a real email, let's just generate the fictional ID and return it, pretending that email is sent. But first we need to modify a little bit our request and response format. So if we go to service service.go, we generated it last time, we don't have ID here as return parameter, so let's edit here. All right, so we also need to edit here. I will remove this E0, so probably we don't need to use it. We will get back to this function later. All right, and now seems we need to change middleware a little bit as we need also to have a string here. Let's remove this. Uh, return. Great. And also, if we go to endpoint, we need to edit the send email response because now we will have the ID as well. Link. All right, and we need to get the ID here. So let's get the ID and return ID ID. Great, no more errors. Now, if we open jrpc handler.go, we can see we have two functions with a to do command. So, what we need to do here, we need to implement the decoders and encoders for our jrpc. So, as it says, uh, it converts gRPC request to user domain request and here is opposite, user domain to gRPC reply. Great, so we have interface here as request and interface as return value. How are we going to do this? We're going to uh, cast the type of request to protobuf send, so send email request. And then when we return it, we basically can replace this 
to new and here we use endpoint dot send email request it should be here and just pass everything we have so it's email can be request dot email and content request dot content all right and let's remove this to do and do very similar to encode have its reply and we also do a typecast in this function will be endpoint send email response and right as implemented we can send error as new and uh, send the prot above send email reply and we need to send the id here so it's reply dot id the send email function will be invoked by user's service so user service must know the notificator address the typical problem of service discovery in our case in our local environment it's easy because we already know the address of the service however in real production system it may be a bit more complicated in this video we will use the etcd it's basically the key value store widely used for service discovery gokit supports other technologies such as console Eureka, etc and uh, let's go and register our notificator service in etcd let's add etcd to our docker compose local environment so it will be available for our servers i copied from internet the configuration of etcd as it's a bit long to type so let's just insert it here all right it doesn't recognize it let's run the etcd in the background Compose up minus D, etcd. And now let's go to our notificator service and register it in etcd. So we open the command service service.go file. And basically what's happening here is we register the logger and some endpoints. So I'm going to create the function called register service. And um, we will return something here. I'm not sure what for now. Let's set the etcd server address in our cases it will be etcd2379 then the prefix of our service it's very important is how other services can find the notificator in the network so let's have services notificator uh, we have the instance instance is the address of particular node so let's make it simple just notificator and as I remember it was 8082 however for each node it can be different different IP address or different port and uh, the key is what should be unique it's prefix plus instance and let's use the etcd package and create the etcd client etcd dot new client let's see if after import will work and we also need the context here all right let's say let's see if etcd has been imported or not etcd no so basically so remember it should be in gokit sd slash etcd let's call it sd etcd So right, SDCD, new client. Right, so what we need here, we need context, we need the list of machines, and we need the client options. All right, so what could be the content? Let's do the 
Christian context background. And uh, machines is basically the list of the etcd servers. So in our case, it's, as we have only one, it's etcd server. And client options is, let's just do it empty for now. Client options. Great, and let's see if error is not new. Let's return it. So we will have an error here. Now we need to get the register sd etcd dot new register as I remember. Let's see if this function exists. Right, so we need to pass the client, the service, and the logger. So I think we will pass the logger to this function. We have it already. So we send the client, and now we need to define our service. So there is a type service here. If we open it, so we need the key, value, TTL, delete options. I think required parameters are key and value only. So key is the key we have previously. And value is the address, so it's instance. I think we can just return it. New register. And uh, now we need to call the register function. So this will register our service in each CD network. And uh, here, let's basically return it because I will show you we will need it later. To register and let's error is nil, and here we will return just nil. Cool. What type do we have here? Register. SD ETCD. Error. Great. Now let's call this function where we need the service. So basically, we can do it here after everything. So register. Error. And we pass the logger here. And let's see, if error is not nil, we need to do something, just going to log it, and uh, return. So why we need to have a register here, if we already registered, is because we also need to deregister our service in case of any crash or any failure of our command line tool. So we can just use defer register dot deregister. The register. Alright. Cool. So now if you run notificator service, it will automatically register in ETCD network. Let's test this out. Let's run the and also, let's maybe add some logs so we can see that we registered in the etcd. All right, let's print some message when we register the service. So logger log and say something as notificator registered in etcd. All right, let's run our notificator service. All right, as you can see, we have this message that it was registered successfully. Now let's get back to our user service and invoke the notificator. Basically, we are going to send a fiction on notification when user is created. As Notificator is a gRPC service, 
We need to share a client stub file with our client, in our case, user service. So if we have a notificator package, gRPC notificator pbgo, it contains client stub. So we need to import this file or package into the users. So let's open users package service service. Um, and what I will do here, I will extend a little bit the type basic user service. I will add one option here, one property, notificator service. And I will import the protobuf package, the client stub. This one will be... I hope it will import automatically, let's see, pb dot notificator service. All right, it didn't work. So what we will do here, need to copy from somewhere the full pass. All right, let's see something. This one, notificator package grpc db does it work yes it works why we don't have this one notificator client all right and let's rename it notificator service client now we need to initialize it and we have the constructor here new basic user service so let's initialize it here i'm going to use the grpc package not grpc package and dial and uh, I will replace it later, but for now, let's do the address here, 8082. And uh, gRPC, let's save. Did it import the file? No. All right, now we have this import gRPC with no secure. I forgot what this uh, this insecure right this insecure basically let's handle the error somehow if error is not new we let's print some error print f unable to connect to notificator in this app. and in this case we can just return the basic user service I just do it with new uh, I mean without the client otherwise we can return here notificator service client is PB and we can use the function from pb package new notificator client and we need to pass the gpc connection here so basically like this why does it work because notificator client is not a pointer so now let's use the notificator service client in our function create so we have also to do comment here what we'll do here, we need to create a user somehow, but I won't do this in this video, maybe I will do it later, maybe we'll just skip. So to do create user in database or somewhere. And after user is created, what we will do, we will set notifications. So we use the notificator service client, and as you can see here, we already have a send email function to which we need to send the context and the email request and options are optional so let's simply do context background and um, pb send email request and of course we have here our email as email and uh, content um, let's just type something here like hi thank you for registration this send email function will return us reply and error. Reply error.
we can return now this error so it's not always new and uh, if reply is also not new let's print the id let's lock the id of the email which we generated previously oh actually i forgot to implement the send email id generation so i will get back to it now lock printf email id reply.id great right as i forgot to implement basically the id generation let's get back to notificator service and look into right send email function so what we need to do here we need to generate some fictional id for now so right here we can use also to do send real email we are not going to review it you can use the smtp go packages etc let's for now use the some package like uuid new before as i remember let's see if we have this package into it right we have it it returns us id and error so id error if error is not new we return empty string and error otherwise we return id.string and nil great so if we go back to docker compose of notificator it was restarted i think oh let's try it again build right so it works it just says that key already exists so it means that we already registered our service in each cd so it won't uh, create another instance which is good and uh, this one is already applied all right let's back to another tab and um, check where we create the all right it's not here it's in the users service right so as you can see we still use here the hard-coded um, address of notificator now we can create the etcd client connect to our etcd instance and get the instance address so let's modify this function a little bit so if we open the notificator we will use the code we used there previously it will be similar so we also have the etcd server prefix and we can generate the client so get back to users and here we will edit we don't need to have instance key because that's what we will get from etcd all right we have the prefix we create the content and um, so let's do here something similar unable to connect to etcd in our case and return some basic service and client has a function get entries but let's save it first get no all right let's import cd cd as well here all right let's check client get Deal nothing all right so remember it's get entries if you open it right so get entries will return us the list of instances so for a specific service if it's found so entries error get entries entries and we need to pass the prefix in our case the pre prefix is here and let's check the error in a similar way unable to Able to get entries. And uh, entries is a slice of strings. So it could be a lot of instances, and we can use some logic to get the one we need. We can use the round robin. In our case, I'm sure that it will be one. Uh, actually, I'm not sure, so let's just double check here. For example, all lengths of entries is zero. So error may be null, so let's just log the whole error. And use the first one always. So 
we do here, we do entries, zero. Great, so we don't have a hard-coded notificator service, so what our service needs to know only is the address of etcd. And it could be actually only one configuration for your service. You connect to etcd and then apply, to apply some logic and get the instance you need. All right, now let's run our user service and let's see if it can connect to etcd, if it can find notificator. So I just do docker compose app users. Let's wait a little bit for it to build. Key not found. Services notificator not found. Let's check why it's not found. Let's go back to the first one. So it should be service notificator. I think what we need to do now is we need to add a slash here after notificator. So I will be back to notificator service and let's just add a slash here. Let's stop our users. Let's stop notificator. Uh, it doesn't want to stop so fast. Okay, now it's stopped. All right, app notificator. Why it doesn't use the... All right, the file is not saved. Gain. All right, services notificator, notificator. All right, should be, should be good. Let's try to run users again. All right, I don't see any error, so it should be good. And now let's open another tab and test the user's endpoint. So, as you remember, it was post to localhost. And as you remember, the address was 8802 slash create and send some uh, email. test. Right, the error is now. Let's check the logs. Alright, and here we have our email ID, which was generated by, by notificator service. Let's see if, if we have any log in notificator. Right, send email was invoked. That's all for today. In this video, we have implemented the notificator service, registered it in etcd, connected with another service users, in the next video, we are going to review the service authorization using GWT JSON Web Tokens. I hope it was interesting and useful, and see you later!